So good evening, everyone watching this live stream of European Fields Unlocked on uh, this wonderful Friday evening broadcast uh, from the Netherlands to Portugal, receiving guests for the premiere of Campo de Futebol. Uh, forgive me my, uh, my poor pronunciation of Portuguese. Uh, we have a couple of guests tonight um, for the premiere, which is uh, João Nuno Coelho, Paulo Chetrica, Rui Prata, and Hans van der Meer. And the whole event is put together and uh, technically by Laura Quarto, whom we would like to thank up front. So good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Glad to see you all online. Um, well, João, if I may start with you, um, how wonderful. We already noticed that we're both paying a tribute uh, to each other's national team. You play in orange tonight and I play in Portuguese red. And um, But let me introduce you briefly to the audience who may not know you. You're a, a writer and a journalist, right? Born in, uh, in Porto in 69. You studied sociology um, with uh, actually as a subject football as a social phenomenon. Uh, and later also focusing on the history, its culture, and then also moving into the area of statistical analysis of the um, right. of, of the game, and and currently you're working for TSF Radio and uh, RTP Television, uh, which is wonderful, and um, and you published a book um, that was published in Portugal, Spain, and uh, and Brazil, right? Dealing with it's it's called uh, Nordisch uh, Europeis. Europe, um, yes. dealing with the history of European competition football, right? Is that uh, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. It was the, the last book I wrote. Uh, also, I wrote a blog about uh, the Portuguese football history, uh, a book called Paixão do Povo, meaning the, the people's passion in 2000. Um, and it, it has been my, my work uh, since I left uh, college. It's football, uh, first from a, a social so, sociological perspective, and afterwards from a historic and uh, historical perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, I'm also a football player. I, I'm, I'm getting good. old, but I I, I still play. And uh, uh, kids coach. So uh, more more than everything, I see myself as a, a football uh, math uh, since I can remember. Right. We have this wonderful group of people together, I think, where, let's say, football and photography play a role uh, for many of us uh, in different uh, forms. To jump from you to uh, Paolo Chitrika, uh, photographer, um, educator also, um, uh, born in Lisbon in 65. You studied uh, photography at uh, Arco in uh, Lisbon. Yeah. If, I, if I'm right, and in history at the University of Lisbon, yes. and, and then on towards, let's say, a more theoretical approach yes. of the medium, and uh, uh, finished yeah. with a PhD at the University of yeah. Westminster, right, Paolo? Yes, in London, yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, and, and you were the curator, I understood, let's say, next to, of course, being a, an active photographer, having multiple shows uh, yes. internationally. Um, you also, but you were also you were a curator of of uh, of an exhibition dealing with football, right? Yes, I, I made a, uh, an extensive work in two thousand and four, two thousand and two to two thousand and four about uh, football, um, a bit all over the all over the Portuguese uh, country uh, with several exhibitions. And I curated a major uh, exhibition here in Lisbon, which has a, a kind of an, an historical um, uh, uh, component and, and also a, mm -hmm. a contemporary component with, with uh, other two uh, uh, photographers, Pedro Lutri and Antonio Julio Duarte. Um, yes, and, and I also exhibit with, with Anne in, in Braga, uh, invited by Rui. <laughs> So yes, and football always been a, a kind of a very 
uh, one of my main interests. I'm, I'm a football fan. I go to the stadium quite uh, often, as much as I can. But I'm also interested in football as a social ph phenomenon, not only mm -hmm. a kind of a viewer's perspective. So, uh, uh, so it was uh, quite a challenge to do some visual work on football and landscape. Uh, yes, um, it was very good. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. And the, the show, the Braga show, was we were all talking 2004, which was of was, course yeah. the year, yeah. uh, yes. the year of, of the European Championship yeah. in Portugal. Yes. Yeah. Of course, yes. and this space yes. brings us basically to uh, to Rui, of course, in yes. those days, uh, for let's say the long time director, even founder of Rui. I don't remember of uh, the Encontros, the the Imagem in uh, in, in Braga, right? Sorry, we 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 found it in uh, 1987. There you go. Yeah, wow. but this this show that uh, Paul was talking about, because I was connected with two different. Uh, institutions one thing it was the encounters it was a photo festival mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> i was uh, at when i was a founder i was teacher of uh, history but after in uh, 98 the the mayor invited me to to be the the the, the director and make the installation of uh, a new photo museum uh, mm -hmm. and i was the the first director and then uh, in 2000, 2004, uh, <clears throat> we made in the museum an exhibition with the uh, four photographers, uh, Hans van der Meer, uh, Paul Katrike, Julien Germain, which is also a big, uh -huh. and very interesting photographer, usually in the social aspect of the football in, in Brazil. Right. And also Ulrich something from Denmark that I don't remember the second, uh, the family name. Yeah, that's it. Wonderful. And currently you've, you've, you've started running the, uh, the Imago, the Zbora Festival, another photography festival, right? Yes. Uh, I, I, in, in 2015, I decided to immigrate to, to Finland. I uh -huh. got my retirement uh, in advance. And uh, so I spent uh, hibernating five years on the cold to keep my, my youth. And after last year, I, I returned to Lisbon. And uh, as there is uh, any photo festival, I decided to start one called uh, Imago Lisboa. And we are preparing the, the, the second edition where uh, Paul is one of the Portuguese uh, uh, invited for for this this year. Wonderful, and I and yeah. I envy you for writing this piece for the new book of uh, Jose Manuel Rodriguez. Yes, I was. Uh, who's an old a, friend of mine. <laughs> yeah, I know you have uh, found it the uh, perspective, and uh, you have. Uh, <clears throat> it was a, re a big challenge. It's a Portuguese collection uh, called PH. It will be the number fifth. And uh, Jose asked me to 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 write the text uh, for it. It was a big challenge, and uh, uh, knowing uh, also a little better Jose, that is uh, an amazing person, very funny with uh, yeah. thousands of stories. I never I never saw him at the football pitch, though. But the one who could be found at football pitches, both as a player and as a photographer, is of course. Our, our other guests um, whose film, whose, let's say, films are all online on the Paradox website. Now, the new Paradox uh, YouTube channel that you have all found, yeah? all our viewers have found. Uh, so, uh, warm welcome also to Hans van der Meer. Hans, welcome on the, on the show. Thank you. Premier. Thank, thank you. Hans, of course, is a photographer and he became actually a filmmaker, uh, more or less through let's say, is uh, the work on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the football. It started, the football thing started with, uh, with Dutch Field, which was a, a beautiful book he made on, let's say, pitches in the, in the Dutch landscape. A small, very uh, intimate book with a beautiful text by Jan Mulder, a former international football player and also a very good writer who became a good friend of, uh, of, uh, of Hans. And, and when we were touring this exhibition, 
I, I, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Bas Vroeg, as you will read. I'm the director of Paradox. We started touring Dutch fields that Hans had actually developed internationally. And whenever there were occasions or possibilities, um, Hans managed to say, actually, to also shoot locally. And sometimes by his own initiative and later also uh, was commissioned to then also run, uh, make a movie. And um, so the traveling show European Fields uh, grew into, let's say, was actually when it became European Fields with all the work that was made across Europe. It also had in the end four films, later even five films on board that were shot in different countries in, well, in France, in Flanders, where it all started, in, um, in the UK. And um, what am I forgetting now, Hans? Um, Italy. Portugal, Italy, of course. And Portugal, Portugal and, and, and later on in Italy. Yeah. yeah. And the reason, of course, of doing this, this let's say, this, this project is basically say, okay, in times of Corona, COVID, everything, we're all in lockdown. People are longing to play together, to be together, to enjoy each other's company, to look at one another and, and say, and the films are a beautiful expression of also of human, this necessity of relating to one another. And, and, you know, and that, uh, anyway, we found the front of the pro could say, okay, we should dust them off, polish them up and make them available to the world. Hans, um, anything to add before we start the movie? No, no, no. Let, what, let's, let's, have, let's uh, look at the, at the film and then uh, we can briefly talk uh, maybe after the film. Should right. we, uh, should yeah, we just start? Apologies, apologies, especially to the Portuguese um, attendance, the people, the viewers that we speak in, 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 in English, but I hope it's all right for you. And whenever yeah. questions would be raised, I'm sure that people can pick up things in Portuguese. We will manage among us to, uh, <laughs> to ask you. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Enjoy the movie. We'll be back yes. after 22 minutes. Hans, what's the exact time? I'm not sure. I think 23, 24 minutes. 23, 23 minutes. Enjoy. See you in a bit. Como é que eu vou para o campo de jogos de Gandarela? É por aqui, sempre. Sempre nesta estrada? Sim, sim. Chega à Formil, vira para a esquerda, já está na Gandarela. Ah, obrigada. A Gandarela? Sim. Vai bem, chega aí a dia, então, o entroncamento diz Gandarela. É à esquerda. Já aqui sempre... à frente. Tem que virar à esquerda? Formil de Vasco, é. Vai sempre em frente. E depois à frente tem as bombas. Está para a Gandarela. Para o campo de jogos da Gandarela, é por aqui? Sempre em frente? Diga. O campo de jogos de Gandarela. Ah, e a Gandarela não é para aqui? Não. Não, aqui é para mim. É, porque a Gandarela tem que ir para cá. Quando vai às bombas. Sim. E, e depois você segue. Quem é direito está aí? Tem os braços para a Gandarela. Tem outro para o outro lado. Você mete sempre em frente. Sim. E já diz mesmo que tem aos pelados, já diz, mas tem que ser abaixo e seguir. Um campo, um campo de jogos? Não, aqui não tem. Não tem? Não, tem a luz ao desta tem. Ah, a tem. Tem. Ah, vai para cima. Sim. Aqui tem a igreja. Sim. Depois, estrada, pula a usada. Sim. Vai para a estrada, 300 metros. Sim. 
Porque depois tem, tem a curva Sim. e tem escrito campo de futebol. Pronto, é Isto é 5 minutos. Pronto, ainda bem. Sim. Tem um carvalho corredor e tem o um salão. E o senhor mete numa avenida que tem assim em cima, que ele é logo por ali. Mas é para virar, vou virar ou vou sempre em frente? Você chega ali ao tal carvalho. Sim. E tem de fazer um bocadinho de curva e depois seguir em frente. Está bem. E depois corta um bocadinho à esquerda. Está certo. Se você perguntar ali, está bem do copo. Vocês vão atrás, vão, uh, seguem aí atrás, Sim. viram para paredes, Sim. o primeiro desvio à esquerda diz nos Pereira. Sim. E vocês cortam para aí fora, vão sair à beira do Cristo Rei. Sim. E depois vocês lá perguntam, que é, é, é mesmo para o campo de futebol? É, para o campo de jogos. Sim. Para o campo de jogos, eu vou dizer que não, 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 não preciso mais. perguntar a ninguém. O campo de jogos. O campo de jogos, olha, eu sou daqui e pouco sei, mas a senhora sai, ó, tem o Cristo Rei? Sim, é Vai sempre ver esta estrela fora, não é? Onde é que está o Cristo Rei? O Cristo Rei está na estrada lá em cima. E depois ali pergunta que é logo a seguir. Está bem. Agora dizer assim certo um dia, não sei. Pronto, está bem, obrigado. Equipa de Santelos de Marinha vai jogar. Com o número 12, pai. O número 2, Cocas. Número 4, Nandinho, capitão de equipa. Número 7, Rocinha. Número 10, Zé Luiz. Número 11, Silvio. Número 14, Rui Freitas. Número 15, Edgar. Número 16, Arturinho. Número 20, Paulo Silva. E com o número 21, Xavier. Na reta de que vai para... Para Lousada. E lá em cima diz Lousada. Sim. E vira à direita para Lousada. Sim. Logo em cima vai ver uma, à sua direita vai ver uma garagem, por exemplo, ali, desta casa e atrás. Sim. Atrás tem um, um caminho que mete a lenda também, uma estradazinha. Vai ter na espera por um ali que todos o dizem.
Mas é, volta para trás e segue para o estado da Lameira, não é? Sim. Tem aqui um caminho direito, mas é uma carrinha lá. E, segue, e chega lá acima, adentro do turismo, que tem aqui o turismo do lado, aqui acima, dar a colar a volta da Pica da Além, sem para andar. Dessa depois lá tem um desvio assim à esquerda, é logo embaixo, mesmo pertinho da estrada. Está bem. A estrada principal, agora a autoestrada não pode lá ir. Está bem. Vai. Se quer ir para lá, não é? Está tá bem. Pronto. E se é mais perto, agora aqui é lá para trás, a relação. Está. Vamos aí assim então. Pronto. Obrigada, sim. Nada. Deus, Deus, boa tarde. E volta e vai sempre na estrada principal. Está, ah, obrigada. E lá em direita à esquerda, lá, a chegar lá acima, em direita à esquerda tem um estradão assim. Está certo. Já vem para, para baixo e encontra logo, porque o estradão é alto para o lado. Pois, está bem. Obrigada. Obrigada. Vai encontrar duas estradas. Não mete para, para de baixo, para a direita, mete para de cima. Logo aqui à frente. Está bem? É, neste estradão sobem sempre, depois vão apanhar um desvio à sua direita para baixo hum. e já vão colocar para a rua. Está bem. Agora é tocar um pouquinho em cima, não foi que quer não. Mas diga-me lá uma coisa. Aqui joga, neste campo, Valdebouro, joga, joga o adversário. Calhar, tá? moçarinha nova. Ah. É, não tem grupo. Ah, não tem? Não, é só moçarinha nova. Ah, tá certo. Né? Por, isso é que, por isso é que não tem. Não pois joga é. sempre, não é? Pois é. Está é. certo. Olha, não ganho modo de vida. Apanha muito soco, cai de cabela, foda as pernas, caga no modo de vida. Ganho muito dinheiro, não é claro, bem entendido. Mas está-me embora de preço. Pois. É. Então vocês agora é ponto bom. Aqui agora, aqui, já claro, aqui é bom de bolo. Agora daqui a certo lá para a Vila Nova e por isso para a Terra Forte. Né? Vai, 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 vai,
Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> it's not the kind of movie that you fall asleep over, right? Are you all, no, can you all hear me? <laughs> no. <laughs> what, what, to what's put yeah. Joao, can I give you the okay. floor first? I mean, the things that struck you for it was not the first time you saw the movie no um, no it was it wasn't mm. I, from from the first time i saw it i felt so identified uh, first because i'm a football fan also because i'm a, a amateur football player um mm -hmm. so uh and I, also because i'm a sociologist all things mm. together right um i really uh I'm really fond of seeing people doing things together, uh, as like as the um, the American sociologist Howard Becker uh, from uh, symbolic inter interactionism said, um, "Culture is people doing things together and sharing uh, meanings." And right. what I see in this in this film is people who share meanings and do things together. Uh, and maybe we are in a time that we are lost, losing that ability of doing things together, uh, playing football or having uh, community uh, events. People are alone most of the time or in the middle of a crowd of a shopping mall, but they are not doing things together. Uh, yeah. meaningful, meaningful things, you know. And that's what I see in football, is people that uh, uh, share something they love and they do it together. Not only the players, but also the, the crowds or the small crowds in this case. Um, but they feel uh, like these bonds between them. And I think that we are losing that uh, in society in general and in modern football, where... Mm -hmm. The, where the game is uh, 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 a, a mean of uh, making money, you know, right. uh, with this with this confinement and this COVID thing, um, I realized that um, for many of the the people in football, um, there is not there is not a problem of not having the funds in the stadium. Uh, because uh, what they really want is uh, televised football. And for instance, in Portugal, now uh, the, the championship will return next week. Mm -hmm. And we are having matches every day. Yeah. From, to catch up. From, the, 
to catch yeah. up and finish on time. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. Yeah. From next week until the end of July, there will be only nine days without football. No football. <laughs> so yeah. for the television, this is perfect, you know, because they are not worried about the fans, the 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 people who paid for their season uh, season tickets. Yeah. They just want to sell uh, the publicity uh, right. and Around. with with football. And yeah. that's what I that's what I really love about about amateur football is that I can see people doing things together as a community. And yeah. so I think we are losing that not only in football but, but as a society as a whole. Yeah. Yeah, that is very funny, of course, to see. I mean, that people take the had the game, the play, so seriously. And they all copy yeah, yeah, yeah. and they yeah. all copy the behavior and the rituals coming from Champions League football, the way the matches start, you know, from jumping from Portugal, tiny pitch next to the sea, you know, somewhere on a small pitch on a hill. The guys, we, in a way, we're all behaving the same. The way people behave when there is an when there with injuries, or oh. I know <laughs> because because we, because we are it's it's our opportunity to be uh, youngsters again. Yeah, it is our chance to behave without thinking a lot, uh, yeah. without responsibilities. Without uh, having to think about our uh, job, our families, and for 90 minutes, we are just uh, eight or nine years old again, yeah. and that's what it is also great about uh, about football, amateur football. Is that it's like uh, the weekly return to childhood, right? Yeah. Oh, I, 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 always. Sorry, answer. Go on. Well, what is so so interesting uh, about not only amateur football, but um, I mean the the visual element, the element of watching uh, um, and looking at football uh, is so important in terms of you have to use your eyes in the first place, but you in the second place you have to use also your imagination, and you see. You see in in photography and and when I started filming, you see these two things so blending so uh, beautiful because it's so much about in the first place uh, when you play football and you watch football, it's constantly about adapting to the next situation and you have to realize that you really have to look, you have to use your eyes to understand football in terms of the next moment, the next move, the next step, the next. So it's a very visual sport. And I think the reason why television and football are so, uh, you know, such a strong combination is that even is a kind of exciting thing to do. Although for me, it's a very different experience than playing football. But, but the same element is there that you have really to be much aware of um the the, bear, the player in ball possession does he see what we see does he see the opportunity so it's constantly adapting to the next moment and uh very good football players uh i always am amazed how uh how how they keep their rest in very stressful situation i mean a very good football player he, he looks like it, if it looks very easy what he does, but it's not very easy. And the difference between an amateur player on the pitches where we play amateur players is that when the moment becomes tense and stressful and your technique skill is not so good, you kind of lose control. And really good players, they, they stay in control and they keep calm and they have the overview of everything. And this is also why you know on a certain level of football it becomes really interesting to you know to see that uh, <clears throat> how how professional football players uh, are really like actors in a, in a drama you know they they have a kind of skills 
that you and I won't have normally on a football pitch. But in the, the essence is quite the same. I mean, we when we play amateur football games, in our imagination, it's exactly the same as if we are performing on the same stage as where they are. In reality, it's not like that. But it doesn't really matter because we are enjoying what we do. And that's what, yeah. yeah, and that's what I call we are we are slightly in a different reality. And I think the part of the play, I mean it's it's a match, it's also a struggle, it's it's a battle, but it's also a play. And in, in the play we feel free to let ourselves go. So that's why you see this overacting, you see these dramas, you see the gestures, you see but the, the reason why we can do that is because we feel safe. We feel safe within the rules of the game. Yeah. Like children, when they play, they have certain rules. And, you know, if, if you are uh, cheating, then oh, you have to be really attentive. But normally you feel free to let yourself go. Yeah. And I think this is a very important part of uh, uh, what's happening on the football ground because people don't even realize that they they – like in the movie or or when you read a book or when when you see uh, uh, in a stadium a wonderful game you are your imagination takes you on another level i mean the story takes you on another other level yeah. and that's constantly what you are looking at you're looking at the situations where people are acting on another level in their life yeah and i yeah, think it's very important Hans. i mean the way you look at it, and this is maybe where I want to make a jump to Paolo, because he probably recognizes uh, with his photography as well uh, in his series Stadia uh, that you made yes. football. Actually, yes. you 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 position yourself in the same kind of observer situation. Uh? It's 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 a bit of the uh, you take a kind of a distance. It's the, so you see the pitch. It's a wider yeah. scene. Yeah. Which is connecting to something that Hans yeah. described earlier on. Can you describe? You did it yes. intuitively. You did the same thing, and it's of course yeah, because you're doing. It's not just focusing yes, I, I really, on the act of the individual. Yeah, it's it's very much on the line. I, yes, yes. My I think my 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 project moved a little bit uh, towards landscape, towards uh, landscape uh -huh. and uh, a kind of. Um, like an architecture model, uh, but what what I really like in in these uh, films, Jans, they are great because uh, yeah, we talked previously about this idea between photography and film, mm -hmm. and then film you have you have the drama, you know, uh, you have a couple of moments where uh, I can even remember your photographs, you know, particularly the the I think the core of the film is the sending off, you know the. The, mm -hmm. because the you have the prefita, uh, you are near the sea. You have all the all the all the thing is there. The skies, clouds, the wind, the I, I, field. And let the, me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you one detail. It took me quite long because I'm in a fixed position. I, it took me quite long to yes. have a red card, and I was really happy that in this match, prefita, okay. <laughs> because you know what happened quite often the, as a photographer you know how difficult it is because the the, the red yes. card the red card would would be like like this like this <laughs> instead of like yes. this so <laughs> yes. I you know so the referee was showing the red card but on the picture you couldn't even yes. see it sometimes you know because yes. like this instead of like this <laughs> so that's yes. that's that's photography drama yes. you know? <laughs> And so I was, I was really, I was really happy with that red card, you know, like juke, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think and, also and the, all the the drama, you know, people uh, 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 pretending to be injured on the floor, rolling on the floor. Well, I think the editing is very, very good. And but and, and and all, all, the rule, the rule is, the more they move, the less injured they yeah. are. It's yeah. it gets really serious if they don't move. But as long as they make these gestures, they generally yeah. they are all right. Yes, <laughs> and and another thing which is quite good in pointing the direction is the second woman, which is not Portuguese. Yeah. Uh, she's an immigrant from uh, an Eastern European country. Yeah. She's the only one that gives the correct directions. We even ah, she's beautiful. beautiful. 
Right. And, and she said, yeah. the rest, yeah. they just local. So they said, go up, go down. Uh, you <laughs> see the post office, you see this. And uh, it, it's fantastic. We, as Portuguese, we are very used to it. You know, when you are local, it seems that the pitch is just there. So you go up yeah. and then you go down. <laughs> but also, uh, there are other characters, uh, other beautiful characters in your film. You know, this... Uh, this guy wearing this uh, blue uh, working uh, outfit, yeah. you know, yeah. that talks on the phone, and yeah. then it, it has to play again. There are lots of different fantastic characters that you can follow during the film. Yeah. So you, it, uh, it's very good. Was, talking about? was he taking orders for yes. his doing business? Yes, it was something related with work, and yeah. uh, because he, he, he did this uh, so more serious voice. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> probably he was working, and then he just skip uh, work to try to watch a bit of of the game or something like that. It's fantastic. It's a great character, yeah. and another one with a, a kind of a smart coat, smoking, oh, yeah. uh, pretending to be involved in the game. It's yeah. very good. The film. It's, uh, congratulations. Yes. These two guys <laughs> <It's> great. <laughs> It's like a, 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 a sunglasses, yeah. like a mafioso. Yes. Like the, the, look like the, the guys who are going to watch to pick up these uh, watchers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That was the guy who has the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah, but, oh, but, but that's a good question, right? Because uh, in the other films, you don't yes. have like characters, people giving like the, the directions. Why did you? Uh, used it in in this film. Well, I remember when we were working uh, in and around Porto. Um, I was there with uh, Gina Caesar. She's the daughter of Teresa Caesar, the former director of the of the photography museum. And it was so. Uh, after we have a, a couple of times uh, put down the window to ask the uh, the directions, uh, I saw. Wow, these people are really so beautiful. Uh, I just I just wanted to get them in the film somehow. <laughs> and then my camera next to me, I was driving. And when Regina opened the window, I just started filming because, you know, it it I, it, it would be, yeah, it, I I had only to pick it up what was already there. And I, I knew I probably could use it. Um, it was a spontaneous idea. And it, it was because the the people in the countryside in Portugal they well they are they are really you would really have the feeling that you're really far away from I don't know the the, the world of the Champions League and wherever you are you know so it made it made it even more remote for me. Right. It, okay. it, and that was. Ex that was exactly the idea that as far as way as possible from the Champions League, you know, from that kind of places. Rui. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're the only one, if I recall right, I mean, who is not a football fan. I mean, uh, all, the, all the other guys are in what, uh, in, in, in more or less, or involved in photography, in, 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 let's say, in, 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 in football, or fascinated fans, or players, or coaches. Start, yes. You're the only uh, one who's not in the least interested, right? And you did well, not. Uh, I'm, I'm not a football follower and a regular watcher. I, of course, I, I, I was following the European uh, Championship in 2016 that Portugal became the, the winner. And uh, in 2000, I'm, I was uh, playing football when I was a kid. I even had a. The, the costume of uh, Benfica, and uh, I remember some uh, games of '66, uh, for instance, and when we won to to England. And uh, my when I was a child, there was this big big football player Eusebio, mm -hmm. and uh, Portugal in general, in different moments, had uh, great uh, football players. Like uh, nowadays, of course, uh, Ronaldo, but we had. Uh, Figo uh, and um, uh, many others that I don't remember now the name. But um, yes, I mean, uh, the football is very popular in, in Portugal. And even I'm not really, uh, I hear about this and that. And uh, I know that uh, Porto and Benfica, they are 
uh, changing for the 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 league for one point. Uh, so I I listen the news even I don't go to see the the, the games. But I must tell you that I had a, a fantastic experience once uh, in Braga in the new stadium when uh, Braga played uh, for the European um, Championship um, with uh, the Ukrainian, uh, very famous Ukrainian team. And to see the show alive, it's really something that even the same I can compare when I was once in Brazil, in in um, in Bahia, and uh, all of them drummer school comes out, and the, the, it looks like the the soil, the land tremble, you know. So it's very very emotional to see a, a football match alive. Of course, this uh, what ends as here for me. It's go further than the, the football. It's a, a, a tremendous, mm. fantastic. Uh, sociological document in this case about Portugal I think if you do this in, in Holland or the, if you go to the Nordic countries is it will be totally different I think this is more connected or it can be uh, a portrait uh, of uh, the interior of, uh, of the country the, in this case Portugal but I think if you go to Spain Italy or Greece you can maybe find similar similar things and i totally identified with these people of the village because i i love to travel in the interior of portugal and i know and uh, uh, many times you don't have the exact locations and you, you i mean nowadays you have the the gps of course which is a but, sad thing right i mean yeah you have but, a GPS not to ask for directions anymore yeah, and uh, uh, this is, uh, I love the narrative, the, the, the editing of, of the movie. You have different, uh, I don't know how many, four or five different uh, fields. You have the different landscapes nearby the sea. More you can see the, like in the, in the back, uh, backstage, like a bridge of a highway. And uh, this ambience of the, the little village and the, also the audience. There are, Paulo had mentioned some, some funny characters there. Uh, there are really several, the behavior of the people and all these conditions. Also the players, of course, they, they are there for, for passion. All of them as they, their own profession. And uh, maybe one thing that is missing on the, on the movie <laughs> of me, that I imagine that after the game, all of them, the team goes to 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 eat the cozido a portuguese, a Portuguese boiled or something <laughs> like that, you know, because it makes part of our culture. I suppose that uh, even during the game, even <laughs> during the game, they eat. Yeah. Ah, they, the the <laughs> players as well. The football yes. players, yeah. Yes, you know? I think Joao knows that they drink they drink beer. I think, and you got it during the winter because. During the spring and the summer, it's uh, sometimes there's a lot of smoke because they are grilling. Uh, oh, yeah, on the um, side. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, this is. I mean, uh, it's uh, it's a really fantastic, uh, fantastic, uh, and with the under nowadays, um, as we talked this morning, the 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 football fields as uh, this uh, plastic grass more uh, better conditions but uh, you you as we can see there in 16 years ago the the conditions the many it was rain so it, it has a, a lot of mud it's very heavy to run on on, on the field um it, it was hard conditions and the, this is people who really love the things and all the the environment around this this uh, this passion and the uh, the local population all the this is very pure as well i mean i think it's a different world even uh, of course in the first league but uh, it's the people who are defending and following their teams from the heart but here it's more i would say more authentic more um, and uh, it's uh, uh, a social portrait very interesting with the where you defend really uh, the, from the, the your 
uh, village from the bottom of your heart. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing is that uh, that we we kind of share. We have a huge collective memory uh, all over the world of these kind of situations. I think quite a lot of people have been in a situation in their life on a football ground, maybe as a mother or father, but maybe as a player. I remember we were shooting a, a film in Bhutan, uh, the other final in 2002. And uh, I was making uh, the photography there and I went to villages in Bhutan and exactly the same happened what I saw in, in Portugal and in, in other countries in Europe. I mean, they had to prepare the, the pitch before, the, before the, they could start. Um, all the rituals, they were quite similar. Uh, I've, I've been taking photographs in Japan of football. This, sometimes the situation is slightly different because in, in countries like uh, the United States or in uh, Japan, uh, football is much more associated to the schools. So the, the places where you will find the pitches are usually around schools, universities. Um, also in Brazil, I was a little bit surprised that a real normal size football ground you, you don't find easily because they play a lot on these smaller size uh, uh, football ground. But there's, a, there's football everywhere there. And yeah. in cities like Istanbul, they play 24 hours a day. They have these grounds all over the city. And people play there even 3 o'clock in the night. If you want to play football, you can play football there. Uh, so they, they, we share this with so many people and this is why i think uh, that people recognize that so easily uh, uh, and the only thing what what for me was uh, uh, made it possible to do this is because technically the cameras became much easier to do this in in, in the end of the 90s we had the, the dv cam recorder and you could just go there and you didn't need a scenario, you didn't need a budget, you didn't need anything. You didn't need like rolls of film like in 60 millimeter. You just took your camera and you turned it on and you everything uh, I tried to, to record literally from what I saw. And that made it for me possible to, to do these kind of observations. Uh, coincidence is part of it of course but that is the game i like to play also with photography and also with film uh the unexpected thing which you cannot predict before you go there that's so beautiful when you come back and you re uh, uh, you go through the material to spot what you've done it's a lot of it is you can you cannot use but then you have these little things that you take out of it and then you start to edit something out of that, you know. And yes, there is a structure, but the structure is not so much a narrative. The structure is the, the ritual. What happens in every place, in every village, is like, uh, first there is nobody, then somebody arrives and puts the corner flex, they make the lines, then the players arrive. In England, even, they put themselves the goal nets in the goals. Then the referee comes, then the game is played and some people come. <clears throat> At the end of the game, everything happens reverse and you end with a, an empty pitch again. I mean, this is what we do in the weekends all over the world. And that's what people recognize. That's what people see doing themselves. And this is part of something it's huge. Yeah, it's, it's a very much a collective yeah. event, you know, that the community, that the civil society does. It was okay. it's very striking that I remember from years ago that the delegation of Chinese came to the Netherlands actually to study how sports association function, especially around football, because football was, of course, introduced also to China as, let's say, a relatively new picture. They want to catch up, but they didn't understand, of course, and then they are, of course, introducing it from top down, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and whereas in our in Europe, it's so embedded part of our culture. It's totally normal. I was, I was, uh, I'd say, I never played football myself. I played hockey, but because I have my, I had two, two, my two sons are twins, so they ended up in the same team. So I ended up be, becoming a coach of their football team, you know. And then you become part of this whole community of parents around doing things, you know, in the canteen 
or things with training, going to pitches and driving. You know, it's a whole social phenomenon, whether you play at home or away and so on. So it's something that's carried by society as a whole. It's really an embedded thing. Yeah? And this is, of course, the beauty that you feel, and it's, which makes it so interesting is, of course, the tension between the behavior, which is mimicking the professional football world that we all see in, in television, and at the same time, and, and life, which is asking for directions of a pitch that has always been there, where all these things take place that are carried by by community, right? That's 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 the the interesting contrast between the two, yeah? where they come together and yeah, relate to one another in a yeah, kind yeah. of. I didn't. I didn't know that you were involved in the the other final, uh, which is a film that I love, because uh, yeah, yeah. Imagine, I'm... imagine uh, it's like a film about a game between the two lowest team in yeah. the FIFA ranking in the same day that the uh, World Cup final was played. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's yeah. Really an idea. Yeah, I will send you the book. Okay, cool. <laughs> you, did, you, did, you did photographs there around the project? Yeah, 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 yeah. Running the movie, right? Maybe it's good in order I, to. I, I'm, I'm, I'm for one second in the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You are as a photographer. No, but we, we, we were there with a relatively small crew. We were seven people, and I was uh, the photographer. Uh, okay. but but they were doing making their film thing and i was doing more or less you know making my own project there right. out of it and, and obviously at the day of the match i was covering the match of course but in the two weeks before i was relatively free to to do some other things around it and uh, so the, the book gives a slightly different image of of things in bhutan also okay. Okay. Right, guys, I, I notice here on my other screen that there are a couple of questions from the audience watching. And there's one from someone who's, who's, who's hidden behind O Football da Terra. Brilliant work, Hans. How did the players, spectators, react when they saw you with a video camera? Well, you know, usually we used to introduce ourselves um, uh, because there was uh, uh, somebody involved uh, for production. So it, it, we contacted, normally what we did is we contacted the, 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 the Football Association and then somebody would help us in finding these locations. But we had to go there during the week. And when we came back on Saturdays and Sunday, uh, the players also from the away team uh, knew that we were doing something but the, but they didn't pay much attention to me because once you're playing you totally forget everything so um i was i could i could film everything what i wanted and nobody paid attention to me it, mm -hmm. it we were only two three people so it wasn't like a big thing you know it was me standing on the ladder uh, and people like it generally because they don't get that kind of attention on in in villages usually right and from the people who saw the movie i know it happened sometimes at some occasion in, in the uk i remember the movie was shown in bradford you know yeah. and the players came to the opening of the show i remember though people did not feel because in a way people also show themselves quite vulnerably right yeah uh, you yeah. feel you're also exposed but people do not feel like being made a fool turned into a fool i hope not but <laughs> no but that's that vulnerability is definitely there um and and there is there is always an element when you do things like this that that the context and the responsibility for the whole context is is uh, is for me so this is uh, why why for instance the films were always shown in the context of my exhibition and my other work uh, now they are on YouTube, and I totally trust because what I get for the feedback from people that uh, um, you know, and it's also twenty years later almost. But uh, certainly there is this thing uh, in in this film that people, when they are in a situation like that, there is a certain vulnerability in terms of uh, what you can do, uh, uh, and it's not like. Uh, uh, there, um, 
what the situation is not like you make a fool out of people. I think it's very touching in a way, but it's there is definitely something around this uh, where you almost, uh, this is why Jan Mulder, when we had the exhibition, he said, it's like when people are naked, you know, it's like you, you there's nothing you can hide when you are in a situation like this. You are playing and then you are observed by camera. So there is this definitely this kind of thing going on, but I never felt that people were, uh, uh, how do you say that, uh, uh, making a point. For, uh, yeah. So I hope they at least they. I, I think a lot of people will will look at it as like looking in the mirror, as you say, and and in that sense. This is why we recognize our, ourselves so easily in this, I think, you know, this is so uh, the opposite of looking at heroes. When we normally watch football, you look at heroes. But this is, this is about us. This is about our, in, in Dutch, we have an expression, we call it menselijk tekort, which is a kind of uh, our incapability to do things. And that's so much more human than the opposite, you know. I kind of don't like, you know that, uh, for instance, Nike and brands like that, they 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 go in a direction of uh, creating Greek heroes out of football players, uh, in in their kind of advertising way. Well, the whole down to earth thing of uh, of, of football players is much more interesting. You know, uh, I think that it, it's, it's it's almost a business model to make people to to create heroes. I mean that's how they earn money, you know. To 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 make the I when the Champions League started to do this uh, thing with the hymnal, uh, I sometimes said when when I do a talk about football, this is this is a slightly diff, a slightly edgy direction for football, because we all know what happened in 1936 in Berlin. Eh? It's quite easy to go in sport the wrong direction eh? when you when you do things like that so it's much more healthy to do the opposite to see the vulnerability of people instead of creating heroes out of no. uh, well, you, so you've written quite critically about the role of, of of the big capital and its involvement in in in, uh, in football do you feel well, like you know, Literally, when when they started uh, uh, in the arena in Amsterdam, when they started the Champions League in 1998, I sometimes would take photographs there from Ajax, but then from the from the stand from above. But then UEFA took over the stadium, and they they said where the photographers were to sit, and I thought, well, you know, this is ridiculous, you know, I'm because Ajax always let me do, do my thing from above. And, and, you know, this kind of totally control over the product football, what they dictate, that's not my cup of tea. Yeah. They yeah. probably I mean, to tell the referee how to hold the card, right? This way yeah, well, you know, I mean, they, they, sell, they sell something with advertisement. They have a huge yeah. business model there, you know. So they, con they want to control that. And, and what we are looking at here is how it started 150 years ago and it exactly. it it went that direction in the end you know but this is the original form of it yeah. it original originally it was a it was a in the in the english landscape in the 19th century people start to play you know they started to play that's why they have these beautiful playing fields in england yeah. uh, where but people the question, still play the question now is after after so many months of not playing and not watching any live game, um, what in the end, what do we miss most? What will people have missed most? Playing together, being on the pitch themselves, watching it locally, or watching live television on European level or world level? What's your guess? For me, and uh, my work is... is um, is basically on on professional football, but what I miss yeah. the most is playing, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And about professional professional football, as a sociologist, also I have I have the notion that what is happening with football 
is the same that is happening with other activities and other, let's call it industries. So mm -hmm. it's like uh, this um, unorganized capitalism that is controlling everything. Mm -hmm. And football as other uh, cultural forms is controlled by capitalism. Um, mm -hmm. So what I, pre I prefer to think is that uh, there is football as uh, industry and there is football as a sport. Mm -hmm. And uh, we should separate things. And we still can have a word about uh, football as a, a sport and we can still have fun together with football as a sport. As an industry is not in our hands anymore. It's exactly. it's a uncontrollable. It's a, a business, yeah. It's a business like any other. Yeah, we we we're all part of it in a way because you know we watch it. So yeah, I know. Sure. And that's that's how they sell advertisements around it. So yeah, and, and no doubt. Even I I I I don't know whether you know. I think uh, I I've no solution. You know to to uh, to go to go back to the situation which is more healthy i don't know but uh it can be very entertaining to watch a wonderful game of football on television together with a group of friends in a pub or whatever you know nothing wrong with that uh, but but uh, uh the, the whole thing behind the scenes if if you talk to people from fifth pro for instance the 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 the, the people that uh, organize football players themselves in, in how do you call that? Fakbond, uh, bus, what is the word in, in English? The union, the, the international union, the fifth pro. I mean, there's only a small percentage of the players which is really rich. But a lot of these players, especially now in this corona situation, all over the world, they, they live on, on, on a very low level. Even the professional football players, they have a, they have a real big problem, you know. It's not like that they are all making huge amount of money. Right. It's only a small part of that. Of and, yeah. and, uh, and if you look behind the scenes of professional football, you see very ugly things happening there. You, if you talk to people from, from, uh, uh, from Fifth Pro, uh, uh, Theo van Zeggelen was uh, the chairman uh, for a long time. And I, he talked to me once for three hours about what was wrong with, with all the things happening in Eastern mm -hmm. Europe and wherever. Uh, this is this is because it's so easy. Also now what's happening uh, with Newcastle taken over by uh, this guy from Saudi Arabia. I mean, yeah, this is capitalism. Yeah, I mean, you can buy a football club. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But and if even the, I didn't read uh, any any study about uh, this uh, social social impact of this. Uh, confinement of this uh, uh, on account of this uh, COVID-19. I imagine, and being back, because of the, we can easily compare um, to, to go to the professional level or to this amateur level. I think, I believe that uh, all these players who are every Sunday or Saturday involved in the match and after, do, after these two months and a half, almost, uh, that are not playing and mm -hmm. are not uh, socializing with uh, the colleagues, and uh, I think it's it's uh, uh, they they miss it. They miss yeah. it. I yeah. think it's uh, something. It's I suppose for many of them, it's like a second family or something like that. It's like a ritual, and uh, somehow they they need to play to release their own adrenaline uh, every mm -hmm. every every week and uh, they, their passion for the, the real football, for the, the sport, not for the industry. Yeah. It's also striking in a way that, let's say, with the professional football gone, let's say also a lot of the violence around football is also gone. Huh? I mean, isn't that, isn't that strange? I mean, we often perceive yeah. say, that the violence around football is kind of a ritual that we, that we say, maybe thank God there is football where people can get do something with the aggression, with their frustration. I mean, it's something that focuses, that canalized, is canalized through through football. But the strange thing is, of course, all of a sudden there is no football. And then what happened to all this aggression? What, what happened? It, it, it's, 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 the, it's, the, it's, the, 
like football or is it, you know? Oh, sometimes it's at home, unfortunately. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. I don't know. But there were some incidents between football uh, um, supporters here in Lisbon without football uh -huh. last week. <laughs> hmm. Yes, uh, uh, which was very strange because there's nothing going on. <laughs> But still, yes. they you know they map these places and they fight. They they sort of going uh, attacking each other, which is the most bizarre and violent yeah. Uh, yeah. outrage uh, situation. Uh, and and I think here in Portugal, a bit everywhere. I think the the, the whole organization of football is totally uh, um, involved in violence as well they, they 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 don't stop it they pretend that they want to stop it but they don't stop it i mean yeah. uh, every time there is a game between big uh, big uh, uh, um, national teams or big clubs elsewhere in europe there's always violence it is outrage and uh, um, i used to remember football before the the, the organized s supporters and it was uh, it was better. It was more healthier, I think, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> less um, aggressive. But um, but yes, it's. Uh, I, I think that we live in in a, a very strange uh, situation. I mean, uh, professional football is coming back in Portugal, but not amateur football or non-league football. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Um, only because of Juan was telling because of the money. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I was I was quite quite impressed by 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 something that I read uh, yesterday um, in France in Strasbourg and in Paris uh, the outskirts of Paris uh, there were two cases of um, amateur games amateur matches mm -hmm. matches involving like two or three hundred supporters illegal matches mm. played. Uh, last week, mm, so okay. there were people who were not not were not able to uh, leave without the amateur football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not only players, but also supporters. Yeah. Two hundred, three hundred, yeah, and yeah. now they are they are having to to be tests <laughs> for COVID. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, 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 I was thinking like. This thing is really important for these people. And it yeah. is not Paris Saint Germain or yeah. Strasbourg. It's like mm -hmm. small, uh, small country teams. Uh, and they they felt the need to play each other, and people felt the need to, to watch the games. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. Okay, guys. Maybe this is a good conclusion let's say your observation let's say of this thing to to conclude uh, the evening together uh, thank you thank you all thank you congratulations to for contributing thank it's you yeah. it's a great thank film. you Hans. Yeah. i'm really honored that uh, the, uh, the films and also bus uh, should be thanked because it was his idea that uh, course, to bring to bring the films uh, on youtube Perfect. Okay. We could, Thank you. We could do it without having to be tested for COVID like the French guys. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> it, it brings good things as well, not this kind of isolation. Yes, it's true. Yeah. It's true. Yes. true. Yeah. And I want to let me thank Laura again, Laura Quarto, yeah. who did yeah. the, the technical. Uh, set up and connected with all of us. I mean, okay. bringing us together at this uh, late hour. And also and, Thomas, uh, Thomas, who did the editing Thomas. and, the, and the, the remastering. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Have a good weekend. Okay. Ciao. Ciao. Football. Yeah. But I think we'll come back soon. Ciao. Yeah. Thank Ciao. you. Ciao. Bye. Bye. <laughs>